going to be talking about, yeah, look, bring your cat next time. So I'm going to say your cat was really cute. Cat was there earlier. Bring your cat up. That'll that'll push the views up. Was there was a cat? Cats and coffee. It's called uh, cross cross niching. Mm -hmm. In the if you want to get technical on the SEO. And so today, a cat. You're, yes. you're in the dark. You're, is there a cat there? You look like you're you're stroking something, but it's off camera, so we don't. I don't. I'm not sure we want to know. Ah, it is a cat. Oh, he's so cute. He's so much cuter than you, and he's got more hair than you too. That's an easy win. He's licking your beard because he thinks it needs grooming. That's so sweet. Yeah, put him down. I'm gonna put him back in on the on the pillow. He was actually sleeping. He was like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah, yeah. Look, it's their duty. You take care of them. You feed them. You give them a home, and they will damn well be petted. Yeah, when yeah, you feel yeah. like it. And they go and, and and they go around and they go. Who are you now again? Yeah, yeah. Until it's time to be fed. It's what yeah. I like to think of as a social contract. Right. Yeah. You know that you've entered into animals. They they haven't said as much, but if if they didn't like it, they could leave. Just like Australia said, if you don't like it, you got one freedom. You can leave. You didn't hear that. That was a years ago. That was, that was the old uh, Australian prime minister talking about immigrants complaining. So they don't like it in Australia, and he got very he's very right wing kind of uh, prime minister. Mm. And he said, "Oh, we got lots of rights in Australia." That's my Australian accent. I'm annoying every Australian now. But he said, oh, yeah, you got loads of rights here. You got a right for this, you're right for that, blah, blah. but finally, we got an important right. You don't like it, you got a right to leave. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> don't admire the Australians for just, you know, they, at least they don't. So, you know. Surviving by pretty much anything that moves in Australia that can and wants to kill you. Yeah, it's, it literally is. People that think Australia is like the most, you know, and I loved, I loved it. I loved my time in Sydney, but, but my, the bugs terrified me. The bugs. Yeah. I can imagine it. So today, so today we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, yeah. So sometime today we're going to talk actually about kind of an interest. It's a little bit nerdy, but we're going to keep it at a reasonably high level. Um, yes. But you would okay. You know what? Uh, we're going to keep it. We should, but you're going to do all the sciencey talking anyway. I'm just going to I'm going to open the door and then I'm you're going to walk through it. Right. It's going to work. We're teamwork. So we're going to talk <laughs> about we're going to talk about coffee temperature. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen some funny things, a couple of funny things. The first is... Um, the first there is, is people that are wrong. There's people that are wrong on the internet, not us. Uh, yeah, no. Obviously. Um, but, uh, but there are people that are wrong on the internet. So I was, watching, I was watching a video on... I was looking up temperature stuff after actually reading a very interesting article on Barista Hustle, which, mm -hmm. um, which is a really, really great source of uh, technical information about coffee you can take lessons there it's it's really good value i do highly recommend it uh but they sent a newsletter out and they were talking about i think james hoffman many years ago looking at the new world-class machines mm -hmm. and um and getting temperature stability within 0 0.2 degrees celsius or something like that and they said they declared at the time that that temperature stability is done well you know that's news to a lot of people <laughs> buying cheap coffee machines but um they did uh, they did go on and talk about uh actually some different designs that people are coming up with uh, mm -hmm. that allow temperature to be varied during the process of pulling a shot and so i started looking into that and then i started looking into like actually asking myself when do i change the temperature and how do i go about doing it mm -hmm. so we talked a little bit about the practicalities of it yeah yeah and you haven't asked yourself the, the most important question. Why do why? you want to change it? Why would you want to change it? Why would you want to change Why would you do that? Great place to start. So that's what we're going to talk about. Before we do, just one piece of news and actually two pieces of news. Um, and uh, half an hour is gone. No, no, no. It's going to be really quick. Listen, do you want the good news or the bad news? I want the bad news. All right. The bad news is Colombia has gone to hell. Uh, basically, um, it's, it's a really bad situation. So we've talked about it before about Colombian coffee uh, and the difficulties they had. I think previously they had sort of you know strikes and and blockades and they getting difficult to get coffee out. Now they've had uh, terrible weather, uh, mm -hmm. it's El Nino patterns or something. But terrible weather. The harvest has been really bad. But logistics on shipping. I've talked about this before. But all the problems with containers, getting containers, shipping. You may have heard on the news in the UK that a number of container ships were turned away from port. Well, they, so they went turned away. They came here, couldn't get in, but rather than wait, they just left. <laughs> they, went on, they went to Amsterdam instead. They went, yeah, no, we're not waiting. Costs money. Time's money. Mm -hmm. uh, in, off the coast of, Canada, of uh, California, I think there was something like 100 or more 
container ships are sitting out there waiting to, to. So basically the problem is coffee growers, producers cannot get coffee to their markets as a consequence um, of the bad harvest and all these supply uh, problems, exports from Colombia have dropped by 1 million bags. Wow. 1 million bags. The consequence of that- well, is What that size bag? 60 kilo bags. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, um, so you've got a million 60 kilo bags of coffee. That's a lot of coffee. It, 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 to give you, put this in, into, into perspective, um, a number of it's, coffee traders- It's like 60 million kilos. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot it's of sixty thousand uh, uh, sixty thousand tons. It's sixty thousand tons of coffee um, that may or may not get sold. I mean, they'll get sold somewhere, but they're not going to come over here anytime soon. As a consequence, obviously, prices keep getting pushed up um, because there's less coffee on the market that can get to us. But what this also means is a number of traders are going to go bust. Because traders have paid in advance. That's the way the way it works, contracts. So they'll do a futures contract. They've bought this in advance. They've paid the money to the farmers. The farmers can't fulfill it. They'll default on their contracts. The traders have to fill the orders by buying it at today's rate, which is a lot more expensive than when they agreed the price earlier, in order, and they'll go bust. So some of the bigger traders will survive. They'll take hits of, I've heard, 8 to 10 million each dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, small traders will be going bust. Um, the actual uh, growth association in, in Colombia is going to take a massive hit. And I've got everybody in the supply chain. So basically, it's, it's a really messed up situation. Uh, if you can get Colombian coffee, I'd say get it because you might not have some for a while. The roasters are starting to blend. So there, so you know, with our one of our favorite guys, uh, Gerald over at Peabury, mm -hmm. don't know what he's doing. He's got that Colombian that we really like. Um, what's the name of that again? That, that Colombian, it's the, the uh, 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 peace and hope. No, that's a no, blend. No, peace, I've got a, I've got a kilo of peace and hope in, in my kitchen at the moment. Now, anyway, he's got a, he's got a really nice, uh, he's got a really nice hundred percent Colombian. What they're, a lot of roast roasters are doing now you'll find is that the signature single origin blend of Colombian from your local roaster, uh, they will now be changing those out. They'll be blending them. With something else or, or or dropping them entirely so if you like your Colombian coffee maybe stack up a little bit that's the bad news out the way panic buy here panic buy yeah we should have a panic buy button oh, i missed an opportunity yeah. <laughs> okay um <laughs> yeah i could i could like pump it all up get the you know get the fever going yeah yeah and yeah, then yeah. Say, look we've got a few bags left hit buy now i have a little countdown yeah yeah all right so uh, the good news is the good news is i just wanted to i've got a lovely I got a lovely photo. I want to share the picture, uh, the screen uh, of. Uh, I'll try to share the screen. I'm not sure I can share the screen. You press the no. green button, share screen. <laughs> yeah, but I can only share a browser screen. Oh, I didn't think about that because I've got it open in the thing. But anyway, look. So Sammy, who won the um, who won the the kit from us mm -hmm. uh, last week um he or two weeks ago he sent us a great photograph and uh of the the peak water filter and all the equipment that we sent over and he's very happy with that and i wanted to share that but you know also on the good news side is that the the geezer i don't know if he's a geezer or not he's a guy i think he's a geezer he's, I think he's an american and so he would love to be called a geezer because you know uh so the geezer a uh, ben over in uh, america Mm -hmm. We sent him. I was going to send him that awful coffee. Uh, <laughs> no, it was award winning. It was a bird and rock. It was bird and rock. I looked at their award. They regular award winners, but they had that coffee, which I think was from Sumatra, and it was a rabica. It was actually a wrapper from Sumatra, and it had that pipe tobacco flavor. Mm. But I, 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 I couldn't follow through in it. I oh, like, why? I know. I, I bought him a bag of of, of Starbucks their, coffee. I bought him a bag of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> No, I didn't do that to you. I didn't do that. Uh, that, that we, we got him a, a bag of Starbucks coffee and we decided to go for, for the bad one because that's what you get for subscribing yeah. to, a, to a, a nice, dark, oily roast. Um, yes, this is gonna, it's going black. to mess up your grinder. 
Yeah, yeah. Basically, that new grinder you bought is going to clog it. Yeah, no, it's not. and not. Uh, your coffee machine is going to also need uh, complete backflashing and rebuild, and uh, well, it's going to taste like crap. He's going to need a backflash, my friend. Not <laughs> yeah, and you are going to need a backflash, <laughs> yeah. and that is and that is what you get oh. for subscribing to a um, uh, to a giveaway in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the different things that could be interpreted as a backflash. Um, so anyway, <laughs> we're not going to go there, but uh, I got him a lovely, I actually went through and I picked uh, their award-winning. Yeah, I can't uh, even remember uh, what it is. And, I think it's a blend. And Nick knows because he tried it. I didn't try it. I, cause He's I read the it. screen very intensely. I did read the screen intensely. And I, and I picked a Bird and Rock because they were like an award-winning rest and it was their like two award-winning something or other. So look, you've got some coffee coming. You can't complain. <laughs> can't complain. You got the coffee. Listen, Come on, shut, shut up. up. You got the coffee. Thank you, Ross. Oh, Ben, come back. Look, uh, yeah. So hopefully, if he'll get that this week and 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 forgive us. Well, hopefully he's not listening. He doesn't know we said all these nasty things. No, no, he's not listening to us anymore anyway. <laughs> he's got he's got the coffee. That's what he wanted. <laughs> all right. So, so uh, temperature. So when do you set the temperature, Max? Because why? So well, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Why? Why? Why, Max? Why? Because you can. And? No, that's it. That, that, there's no, no particular there's reason no. why you should do it. It's just because, since you can, you might as well do it. No. On a serious <laughs> note, changing the temperature changes the, the, the different solubility of the different compounds in the coffee. So if you extract the same coffee exactly in the same conditions, which is nearly impossible... Sorry to break it down to you guys, but uh, if you, if you, sorry, I'm making myself deaf here to, to much it, return. It sounds good to me. I think. Well, yeah. Okay. It sounds good to you, that. but I'm way too loud on myself. I, I don't like the sound of my voice too much. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not true. I love it. Um, if you, when you extract coffee and if you extract the coffee in the same, in exactly, exactly the same conditions and you only change the temperature, you will have a change in the profile. And this is not because you burn the coffee or you, you do something to it. You can't do anything to it. You're going to extract between 80 and 105 because you're probably under pressure, might be able to go a little over 100. But anyway, something between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius. And... Uh, so there's nothing that will break down at those temperatures in that time. So it's not, it's not you, it's the coffee. Changing the temperature changes what you uh, extract from the coffee and in what proportion. Right. So a higher temperature will allow you to extract more of the less soluble stuff because it's a higher temperature, so it's going to be more effective, more efficient in, in, in taking the stuff out. It's like when you try to, 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 to dissolve salt or sugar in water. Think about it. You have, um, you have um, a spoon of salt. You want to put it in water. If it's, if it's cold water, it's going to take you an hour of stirring before you, 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 you dissolve it. Why do you put salt into water? I mean, I'm thinking of a sugar Pasta. Tea. Oh, pasta. I forgot you're Italian. Okay, of course. Okay. Anyway, let's okay. Sugar, fine. Sugar. Thank you. Sugar um, is a cup of tea. Sugar. Sugar is very soluble in water. It doesn't actually saturate the water. You can make a syrup mm. out of it. Mm-hmm. You can make a semi-solid thing. Um so in theory, you can you can dissolve as much, but how efficient it is, this the dissolution of the sugar into the water. But it depends on the temperature. If it's boiling water, you put it in and it's pretty much gone. If it's cold water, put it in, you have to stir it for a while before it's already suspended. It's all dissolved. And that is the same thing with coffee and, and all of its components. You have only a limited amount of time of contact with wa- between water and the coffee, even though it, it's, uh, very, um, it's very pressure. efficient. Mm. It's very efficient because it's, if it's fine ground and that's why you have espresso. But being efficient doesn't mean that you have enough time to extract completely everything. And also, you don't. Sometimes you don't want to extract completely everything. 
You that's don't. also not and, important. And that's that's actually yeah, because some of the things that you'll extract don't taste nice. So exactly. What you're trying to do is find that is find that middle balance in that. Exactly. Fact. For and example, if you have a dark roast in um, and you want to do a pour over, what do you do? You you extract with water at around 80, 85 degrees, not 100. And that's very important because if you extract at 100 degrees, it's going to take like time. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so the first thing is basically is that temperature affects the, uh, the, uh, the speed of extraction mm -hmm. and thereby the taste. Yes. So you, what we're trying to say is, is that temperature affects the taste. But, but here's the thing. Um, it's not your first, it's not your first tool that you use. It's a tool in the toolbox, but it's the last tool you pull out when, when you've done all your other tweaks, it's the last tool you pull out. Cause the first thing you need to be doing that, especially, you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know, you've been just working with coffee for, for less than a year or so. Yeah. You probably, probably don't want to mess with that because it's going to throw everything off. It's going to change your gonna extraction make, speed. It's going to change your flavor profiles. You're going to get into a mess because yeah. what's going to happen is look what every extra variable, it's not one thing. You'll be combining that with two or three other things that you're doing, probably five other things that, that are, that are changing in your yeah. environment. Now yeah. you've thrown one more thing into that and you've got these other changing variables if you don't really, if you haven't got a very solid idea of how to get those other things set properly up and, and dialed in and you throw that extra variable in there, that's multiplying your problems by a lot. Yeah. Unless you're an expert in design of experiment. And also, even in that case, it's, it's not a good thing to do. Right. But there are times like, I mean, look, the one thing I would say, though, is um, if you, everyone knows this, or most people know this, which is if you have a darker roast, you lower the temperature. And if you've got a lighter roast, you raise the temperature. But hold on a second. Why? Let's just, let's just go through it. Because most people will sort of say that's what you do, but don't actually say why you do that. Because, so do the, that, Max? because the stuff in the light roasts is, uh, is less soluble than the stuff in the dark roast. Because the more you roast something, the, the smaller the molecule that you find in are, uh, will become. And the more... And the more simple they are, the easier they are to, to, to bring in solution. That was such a science answer. I, I have a... That wasn't it's the, the Maillard reaction. The longer it goes, the more the stuff breaks down. That's it. Okay. So what I was going to say was in the lighter roasts, you typically, you've got a more complex roast. On the darker roasts, they're more, they're, they're a sort of more of a, I don't say burned, but you get that kind of what a lot of people associate with coffee taste, but there's not really much complexity to it. It's just a sort of a roasty, flavor not necessarily um, um, not necessarily but as a as a, as a rule, physiochemical I, I, it's it's more of a physio so it can be a, a taste thing but that the taste is affected by what is extracted and the, the, the matter in yeah i get that at, at the point there is is not actually the the flavor itself or the complexity is that physically those flavors are harder to get out of the coffee I get that. What I'm trying to say is the effect on somebody, right? Without mm -hmm. going into this, without appreciating the science. The effect is that if I take a light, if I take a light, how can you not appreciate the science? We all appreciate the science, but you know what? We appreciate more than the science, the scientists, Max, give yourself a pat on the back. And whilst you're doing that, let me just say something. Uh, the, the, uh, the lighter roasts, when you have, um, something like that. and let's say you've you've got a roast which has uh some apricot or stone fruit and maybe a caramel finish and you know etc etc all these things around well if you're drinking it and all you're tasting is initially maybe something that's a little a little burned or over extracted um and you know that you've got everything else set up right so you've got you you know you've made your changes to the grind setting and you've you know, got the right quantities in then you played around with the quantities and everything else but you just you know, you're just the, the the flavor seems a little dull and you're not getting the you're not getting the flavors out. It's, even then it can be a number of things. In fact, it's most likely going to be your water. But putting all that, that aside. That's also right. So putting all that aside, you've got a water filter, you've got it all. Yeah, set we, up. we are we are assuming that you have everything else down everything and it's fine. Everything else is set up right. But you've got that. And I literally I had this problem yesterday. Uh, so I got a new bag of coffee in and I was playing around with it. And I know I had it set up right. 
but I just wasn't quite getting the flavors out. And then I remembered being in your bag of coffee, I hadn't changed the temperature from the last coffee. And generally speaking, I don't go and change the temperatures all the time. But I thought, hmm, I wonder what if I just take this, um, take this temperature up one degree. Mm -hmm. And I took it, I think I took it from, I'm trying to remember, maybe 92 to 93 or 93 to 94. It was one of those. Mm -hmm. I took it up by one degree and my son was with me as well. And we were both tasting the coffees and we we're saying it's nice, but I'm not really getting the flavors coming through. We took it up by one degree, changed nothing else. And of course, you know, we, we, we all know that things can change, but we didn't change anything else. We, we weighed it out. It was 2.1 of a gram, exactly the same weight. Uh, when we pulled that next shot, um, it was a completely different shot. And that was just one degree Celsius of, of change. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely times where if you have got to a place where you, you know, you're thinking, I don't understand why I'm not getting the right flavors out. Mm -hmm. If you've got a PID, that's the time to start maybe moving up one or two degrees at a time and seeing yeah. what kind of difference that makes. Small changes. Yeah. Yeah, not three, four degrees. I mean, one degree is enough, to be honest with you. Making a Small changes. One degree at a time. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you do it. But then that led on to Max, that led on to my thoughts about, well, you know, I've got a E61 group head. I wonder yeah. how... So you have three kilos work. of metal to heat up just in the group head. So, so yeah, so the E61 group head is a big thermal mass that sits there with hot water circulating all the way around it. Very, very good for putting shot up. Inside. Out. Hmm? Inside, not around. What I say? Well, around the inside. Well, obviously not around it. Oh, for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> um, you'd be very frustrating to get into an argument with, wouldn't you? So, I am extremely uh, frustrating. <laughs> I'm going to look, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to your wife as well. We're going to, we're going to console each other. Uh, so, so you've got, uh, you've got that, you've got that, uh, you've got a, a lot of thermal stability there with a lot of mass Mm -hmm. um, that's heated up and then stays hot, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you've got a heat exchanger machine, in which case you've got a little bit of extra work to do into, to, um, uh, into, because the, 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 if, if those are left for a long time, that I, I've never had a heat exchanger machine except for the one I borrowed from you. <laughs> but that wasn't uh, an easy, which I actually, route. Yeah, which actually I, I should I should uh, make a correction from our last podcast. Yeah. The Oscar Mood has a PID. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, big difference. You, you texted me, said you wanted one, but don't come. I, I, on, don't go off track. Don't go off track. Sorry. So you've got the E61. You got the E61 group head, which is which is very good for putting shot after shot. Yeah. But not so good if you leave it for a long time, especially if you've got a heat exchanger machine. You then have to do a cooling flush. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard about warming flushes on on dual boiler machines, but I I'm, I don't really don't really pay attention to that. So well, it's the same as the the cooling flush is that it's just that instead of cooling cooling the group head because you you go in with yeah. colder water, um, you go in with uh, with hot water because the group head is not is not actively heated or not as much, so you stabilize everything. I don't understand this though, but why would your group head, if you, if it's been on for a while, my, under, my understanding mm -hmm. is, is the hot water is constantly going around. Mm -hmm. So why would the group head not be hot enough? It doesn't, but people are a little. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. So you've got that. You've got the, the fully saturated group heads mm -hmm. where effectively the group head sits on the boiler. So the boiler is part of the boiler. It's integrated. Yeah. Um, and so whatever temperature your boiler is, that's the temperature of your group head. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's all that's all groovy. So that's that sounds fantastic. And that's the one where they're talking about getting a 0.2 percent precision, you know, on on the uh, for, for the VID, um, on the which is uh, which is machines. which is actually a Gaja classic. Oh, well, I think no, no, the Gaja classic is a semi saturated which is, so the problem with the saturated group head is the cost of making them um, mm -hmm. and the cost of repairing them. But what they found was, is if you don't actually have the group head sitting directly on the boiler, integrated in the boiler, but you, you separate, you abstract it just a little bit so that the dispersion block um, mm -hmm. is connected and then the dispersion block 
then yes yeah, so the dispersion box connected I, I think i've got it correct to the semi uh, uh saturated group heads and then the group head is not connected directly that makes it a lot cheaper to manufacture and and to maintain and i think that's what you'll see in those prosumer type espresso machines is that right i think so i've never really took, taken one of those apart yeah now i was reading up and i think that's how it works but then Here's what's really interesting. So those are basically the three types of machines that you'll see out there. The E60 mm -hmm. ones, the fully saturated, just bear in mind that they're expensive to maintain. And, with, and then and a fully saturated would be something like a Lamazocca GS3. I don't yep. know if the Lamazocca Mini is, Linear Mini is. I think is. it was a saturated group head, but I am not sure. Yeah. And then you've got the semi-saturated, like the Profitech Pro 300 or the Gagia Classic pros where it looks like it's stuck straight into the boiler but there's that little bit of separation that just mm -hmm. means it's, it's, it's the, the, the boiler it. acts both of both as a reservoir for the hot water for brewing and yeah. as a thermal mass for the for the group head right so when you've got a when you've got a pid att uh, attached to a machine so basically you've got a heat exchanger machine your pid is doing some math to work out um what the temperature will be when it eventually gets to the group head but because the way it works, you get I think cool temp cool water at one end of the of the boiler and hot water at the other. I guess the cool water will be at the bottom, the hot water will be at the top. Uh, then you have to do what's called the cooling flush because the the group head will, will have more hot water in it. That's my understanding of the heat exchanger uh, issues and why you do cooling flushes, right? Oh yes, not necess not exactly. The cooling flush is because you have the the hot water that is going to the brew that's that's actually sitting in the heat exchanger inside the boiler. Yeah, and it's it's hotter than it needs to be for brewing. It's so hotter the, than boiling. It's hotter than boiling because yeah. it, it will be the heat exchange process to, and and so no. Yeah. See that that's, oh, that's it it's a me. common mis misconception. So the 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 water that goes into the group head, as circulating into the group head, uh -huh. is water from the boiler. So it's water for the steam. It's not the water that you brew from. Yeah. So that's separated, and that is at 130 degrees or thereabout, because it's under pressure, and okay. it thermosiphons into the group head. Okay. Have a cat. Uh, you have a I have the tail of a cat like a jaws. Ah, oh, she's so sweet. He's so sweet. And all right. So we have no don't don't step on the keyboard, please. There you go. And um <laughs> it's gorgeous, but he's not interested really. No, it's not interesting at all. Um so you have the, the group, the group head that is heated up by the by the water in the boiiler. Yeah. So that's up at, at, up at about 130 degrees, and that is in the thermosiphon that is a separated circuit that goes into the boiler and uses the, the water that you use for the steam. Yeah. The heat exchanger is another pipe that separates from these that takes cold water from the tank and puts it inside the boiler in a, in a, in a copper pipe. Yeah. It goes inside the, the boiler and out, and while going in and out, takes heat from the from the water in the boiler. So right. it heats up the water as it goes. So you have a, like um like a gooseneck that goes inside the, the water of the of the boiler, and then it goes to the group head to be brewed, and that's the water that it goes in the in the brew. As you as you can you you can picture, you have. Uh, a segment of these that is going to, to be sitting there. So you have a bit of water that is going to be sitting between the entrance of the fresh water, of the cold fresh water, and the group head. If you leave that for a while, that's going to heat up and Watch equilibrate you. to the temperature of the boiler because it doesn't circulate. Right. That's the thing. That's the difference. Okay. So that's why you do the, the cooling flush. And the problem with the cooling flush is that it's different from machine to machine. Yeah. So you kind of have to, to actually speak to, uh, and some of them can be quite long. Yeah, like because that. it depends on the, it depends on the fluidics. It depends how, I mean, if you have uh, one liter, nobody in their right mind would have that, but if you have one liter of dead volume between 
the tank and the group head, that's what you have to flash. I, I was literally hearing 30 second flashes. Yeah, which fair enough. Which for me was amazing because I was, to, people generally have been talking about, I do a three second flush, I do a 10 second flush. So hearing a manufacturer, I think this was Rocket, mm -hmm. uh, come on and say, no, we recommend 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, it's a shot. These things are designed, heat exchangers are designed to pull shots back to back. Yeah. If yeah. you don't and pull a shot back to back. So yeah. you need to rebound. So you need to do that. Then you need to wait another X seconds for it to stabilize at the new temperature. It's kind of complicated. It's one of the reasons I personally, uh, I'm not so great on. See, scale. actually, I disagree with that. Mm. You're preheating the water that goes into the brew. But in theory, if the group head is designed properly, yeah. the water will get to the right temperature when it goes into the brew, the brew head, the group head, not yeah. before. It's not like you. I, I just want to see you get on the phone with the manufacturer and disagree with the guys that built it. I mean, I, I no, they, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that, that ringside. I am sure that they actually they they tell you to do the cooling flush. Yeah. But the and, rebound, and I agree right, with the that. Rebound, I only heard talked about on on forums. I, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. really know. To me, it's a black heart. I don't want a black heart. On I've got enough things to worry about on you know on getting my espresso good in the morning. So, but <laughs> didn't I hear? Didn't I hear? Am I right or wrong in, in that heat exchanger machines supposedly are getting better at, at thermal stability? And I was trying to write. Oh, okay, that makes sense that it's getting better. But wait a minute, why is why are they getting better? What what are they what have they changed? I think it's just the sensors and uh, you, you are more stable and more reactive on uh, on turning the boiler on and off. Uh, okay. I think, but I don't know. Okay, let's leave that behind because everyone knows about that. What was really exciting was this new concept of making a low uh, mass head because generally speaking, mm -hmm. old wisdom says you need a high uh, thermal mass, like a big block, your... your Porter filter and your basket, you it's hefty and it weighs a lot for a reason because it's a big chunk of brass mm -hmm. that once it's heated up holds and retains that heat. It's a bit like having a cast iron pan. I've got a cast iron pan that you need to be a bodybuilder to go yep. and fry an egg with. But once that egg is frying, my friend, <laughs> that thing's you know, it's it's really good for cooking because mm -hmm. the temperature is very stable. You heat it up and then it just stays hot. It's and you, all, you only need to hour. replenish a little bit of heat at a time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's the, the common wisdom mm -hmm. that you have these big blocks, you heat them up, which might take a bit of time, but once mm -hmm. it's there, it's there. Now, uh, yes. We did, did just accept that for a moment, right? Okay. I mean, I'm yeah. sure that there's a reason, but you know, why it's not exactly a true statement. But I've never let the facts get in the way of my arguments <laughs> before, Max, and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> Um, so what was really interesting is the idea, and, and there's, a, there's been a couple of guys come out, well, actually, you know who does it? It's a decent, decent espresso, mm -hmm. who make small group heads without mm -hmm. the thermal mass, yeah. and they heat them, like, just in time. And because it's more reactive, it's faster. Exactly. So they found a way, and I was thinking to myself, actually, you know, we want, we've missed out one type of heating group head -y type thing. Which is the the ones from Sage or Breville? Actually, Thermal. we haven't missed it out. We are talking about it right now. Well, no, it's not because well, no, it's not. It's not because they do it in a in a different way. It the same kind of idea, but achieved in a different way, mm -hmm. right? So they have they heat it with an electronic uh, doohickey and a resistance. Let's just call it doohickey. And um, <laughs> yeah, let's go for the technical sorry. one. Yeah. Okay. So, so the electronic resistance, um, but also, you know, their their systems are designed to be uh, pretty pretty simple for people to use. So they actually, mm -hmm. you've got buttons you can, like on the Barista Express, you can go up or down by two degrees Fahrenheit, which is around one degree Celsius. Mm -hmm. You can only go up to or down to, and I don't think it even shows you. I'm not sure. I don't. I think on the Barista Express it doesn't show you what the temperature is. I don't think people know. Mm -hmm. People have an idea, um, and even then, from the experiments I've seen. You actually have to run one or two shots through, maybe one shot through first to get, which I bet you nobody knows. And the temperature difference was like massive, like five or six degrees. It doesn't heat the group head. No, but they they were running they were running coffees 
when they would set it up, so they'd program yeah. the Barista Express, kind of slightly on a topic here. Mm -hmm. But you program the Barista Express and they'd make it go up by two degrees. Then they'd run a shot through and they and it hasn't really gone up. Then they'd run the second shot through and then it 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 did go up. So I don't know, you know, I don't, they didn't explain yeah. the technicalities yeah. why. Also explain how I can how if you don't run a coffee and you just let the coffee machine heat up, yeah, you can physically grab the porta filter and touch it. Yeah. Because that's, that's not true. that's not hot. That's that not means hot, that the it? group head is not heating up. You're right. You're only heating up the water that goes into the into the coffee, not the group head. Yeah, you're right. The group head is not hot. And so that know, will leach. Meant to get hot. Yes, but that will leach heat out. Right. So it's from very your coffee hard to as well. That it's very hard to maintain stability on on, on those machines, I'd guess. However, if you take a look at the, the way decent does it. It's so smart. Mm -hmm. Um. They have a very low mass group head mm -hmm. and they have uh, two water pipes that come into it, uh, not around it, I have to say, not on the mm -hmm. outside, in case you bring that up again. Um, and one is hot water. I think it was running at about 100 or 100, yeah, about 100 degrees. Maybe that. Sounds about right. I'm not sure. Anyway, one that's running hot and one that's at room temperature. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they have, so they have a PID directly on the group head so mm -hmm. they're measuring the heat of the group head not the boiler and then they have the hot water come in and they have the i won't say cold water because obviously there'd be energy in cooling it so they just take room temperature water mm -hmm. and then they do the math which is very clever mm -hmm. and comes in and they say we want it to be this temperature so we'll mix this much of the hot water that's at 100 and whatever degrees mm -hmm. and this much of the room temperature water and bingo you've got an exact temperature water which, because the mass of the portafil of the group head is so small, so light, it heats it up very quickly to that temperature. That did I get that right? Yeah, I think I got that right. Yeah, that's right. But in fact, if you if you look at the uh, at the decent uh, porta filter, mm -hmm. what is it? I don't know. What is it? It's a bottomless porta filter. Do they not have a one with spouts? Nope. Is it always bottomless? Bottomless. Okay. Why is that? Oh, there's no, there's no mass. And you don't heat it up, so you don't lose heat. Yeah. Because it's not heated up. Uh, so you are okay. actually extracting at the right temperature because the water that you're delivering is at the right temperature. You don't need the thermal mass around it. So that's, that's right. I think this is very interesting. And what it introduces is this idea that some mm -hmm. people are getting into of temperature profiling. So much as we've got flow profiling, um, they've talked about temperature profiling, which mm -hmm. I think is possibly going a little insane. But, you know, we're into espresso, so of course we're going to go a little insane. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently it works particularly well on darker roasts where you come in at a lower temperature and then you raise the temperature up. Or is it the other way around? Anyway, that's mm. the idea of profiling. Is you come in at one temperature. No, I'm pretty sure it's a very low temperature, and you would, you and then you, you you heat it up. I don't know how that would affect the the flavor because at the end of the day, you are extracting, you are collecting everything. So whether you extract everything at nine uh, at ninety five degrees or you start at eighty, something about the pressure, like at, at, as the pressure, because it would go with the pressure. So as you were pressure profiling, you'd be changing the temperature at the same time. I think that's how I was reading about it. Mm. So it would ramp up to six bars at a certain temperature. Then it would ramp to nine bars, change the temperature, and then it would ramp back down again to a lower pressure and change the temperature. I think that mm, I could just be completely making that up there. It's, it makes sense. It's just... Um... Why? It's not going to happen anytime soon, but I like <laughs> the idea of having another knob to twiddle. I, I, I see myself, I see myself one day, Max, having a, a shiny machine uh, yeah, with, with seventy-five levers to yeah. knobs to turn around. Well, I mean, ideally, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have a button that I could just push, and it would do it all for me as well for the day mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. But I like the idea of, do you know, because I, I quite like steampunk. Do you know what I mean by steampunk? Have you? Yeah. I like quite like steampunk. So I kind of like the idea of having a few levers and, and buttons. Yeah. I think, I think actually we should make something like that with mm -hmm. a few levers that do nothing, but they're cool to do. We too. won't tell people they'll do nothing and people will just 
go crazy about it. Yeah, like, oh, oh yeah, God. you see. Because I, I never I, made such good espresso until I pulled these levers. Yeah, 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 huh? yeah. And, and actually, the, some dials, uh, strictly analog, analogic dials that go around. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Wouldn't that be funny? And, we, and they'd be trying to work out by pulling the levers that it would make random activities on the dials, but they wouldn't know that it's random. This is a great idea, Max. This is a winner. Everybody will be sharing their profiles. Like you need to pull the lever halfway down, a quarter way up, all the way down, and then quickly all the way back up again. And they'll be showing their dials, like doing all these kind of things. Oh, an amazing <laughs> coffee. Uh, that'd be a great kind of Easter egg to do. All right, my friend, listen, that's really kind of what I wanted to, uh, I wanted to cover off today um, was just have a bit of a, a dive into, a dive into that crazy, slightly dark world of temperature, temperature, group heads, and bringing. I know we've spoken about group heads before, but not really in this realm of yeah. temperature. What are you thinking? I'm thinking how how to to do it. How to do what? Oh, the whole lever thing. Are you still thinking yeah. about the lever? Okay. Well, we better yeah. end it here whilst you go and. <laughs> yeah. By the way, what are you drinking? I tried the um, that. I I tried that. Did you get some? Did they send you some? Yes. Yes, I got oh, some. That's very nice. And they didn't tell me they sent it to you. They sent the, it, what is it called? La Perla Negra. Yes. That's it's La really Perla nice. Negra. I tried it. Uh, Did you I, like I, it? Because you said you would hate it. I liked it uh, as an Americano. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I had a, a sip as an espresso and it felt like someone beat me up with a bag of plums. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, well done. Does it get the aniseed out? No, that's probably good for you because it's like good for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies, I haven't, by, I haven't felt violently sick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I did some look on our Google Analytics uh, <laughs> over the weekend. We, we it's hundred percent men. There's no women that visit us. I don't know what it is. I think you have to shave the beard, Max, and see what it could be. I, I don't I, know. Could be me. It could. I could be you. I can't believe it's me that the that the reason we don't have any women looking at our show. Uh, anyway, listen. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in case the ladies tuning in, uh, we're going to give away a kilo of this if you're in the UK. Uh, I'm not if you're in the UK. To, I'm not sending any more coffee to Americans. No. Sorry. Did it the one time because I felt bad because I sort of said, you're a winner. And he came back and said, like, oh, I'm so happy. And I was like, yeah, just give me your address. And he was like, I'm in America. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Can't do it. Uh, very sorry, American people and friends. Um, I just got a lot of people in France. Bonjour. Uh, ça va bien? Uh, so, and that's all the French. That's say too, malheureusement. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, we have more French viewers than we do English viewers. Try a little bit. Why? I, um, they like you, Max. That's why. That's the only explanation I can think. That of. that would be a first. So anyway, uh, if you're in France or the US, I'm afraid you can't get this. Uh, we're just not <laughs> that generous. No, that, don't do that. It's not just you can't get it. It's really good. You can't get it. Yeah, but in the UK, you can get a bag of these. You don't have to pay any money. We're just quite nice people. Not very nice people. Uh, don't get confused, but we're not, you know, we're not that no. nice, but we're a little bit nice. We're going to send you a bag of that. Once a month, we're going to give away a different bag of beans. This uh, month, it is La Perla Negra from Carnival Coffee Roasters. Um, I have tried a few of their coffees. Actually, no, I think I've tried almost all of their coffees. Uh, this is one of my favorites. So I do highly but recommend it. Since Nick tried all of their coffee, you, you guys can't can't get any. Yeah, they've got none left. He had him all. He had it, it all. Pretty good. Take a look at this. If I can open it, I can just open this one. This is not the bag I'm sending to you. Um, no, obviously because I can't. He's not going to send you a, a fully sniff bag. I, well, you know what I did was I opened. I, I cut this too too well. And I was gonna, look, at, look at these beans, Max. Hmm. Look at these. Look at these. Look, look at the beans. beans. Look at the beans. Further up. 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 Can you see that? The, the, they're falling into my desk. Yes. Look they're at those nice. beans. Like that. Can you smell that? Definitely. Let me put it up against the microphone. Can you smell it? Smell it. That's your cat. Smell oh, it. She's beautiful. I'm not smelling your cat. Oh, <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> he's so cute. All right, let's sign off there, my friend. Um, I gotta cut this show up, and then uh, next week's a crazy week. I gotta, I've actually got to, I've actually got to go and see a client. Oh, I'm wow. going to see. Yeah, I've, I've been trying for two years. I don't know what to do now. I, I don't have to talk to people in the real world. It's, 
you know what you can do? You can bring, uh, you can take a piece of paper, mm-hmm. cut cut uh, a square hole in it, and just fold it and put it in your pocket. When you talk to them, you put it in front of, of their faces. Yeah. Oh, and if you're right. used to it Zoom, right. it looks like they're on a Zoom screen. Yes. If you're used to Zoom, you actually can yeah. uh, print the the Zoom commands in there. Just go like that. Done. The Zoom commands. It's an idea. Uh, I know. You're, I know you're being silly, but I'm, I might consider that. So am I? Uh, <laughs> uh, so we're going to go. I've got to drive up to the other side of England. Uh, and then uh, it's going to be a busy week. So next week, uh, we'll be back on Saturday. This week, I had the garage. They were coming to install the garage again. They didn't finish it. Apparently, my door's not level. My floor's not level. So they've got to, like, you know, I don't want the garage door to be like like that at an angle. Why not? Yeah, Why not? Good. Why do you want it straight? Do you know what we started doing? <laughs> uh, I, I didn't do this. But whenever, whenever a man sees a door closing automatically, like I've got a button, you push the button, the door closes. Mm-hmm. We feel the need to do what? To dive roll under it. it <laughs> and, and, then, and then reach out and grab the hat. Even the guys who are installing it were like, look at this, wow. You know, and they were dive rolling under it. I'm like, oh, you're so immature. But then I wanted to do it too. Um, it just makes you look like you're in an action movie. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah, but that's why I said, and then and then you also have to reach out and grab your hat last second. Where was that? Is that a James Bond? No, who was that? Indiana Jones. Indiana Nick. Jones. Well, well, I don't know exactly. which Come one. On. I thought a long time ago. All right, my all, friend. All of them. <laughs> Take care. I'm going to talk to you next week.